Hey everyone, it's me again. I was hoping to live stream today, but something's going on with YouTube and this software. They're not connecting. I've tried to troubleshoot it. I don't know what's going on. So I decided to uh, speak off the cuff anyway on the topic that I was planning on doing. Uh, I'll just make a quick video on it rather than a live stream. I'd rather be chatting with you live, but this is the next best thing, I guess, right? I wanted to talk about this phrase that I've been hearing by these, by these protesters about people need to get back to work. That's what I'm hearing, that people need to go back to their jobs and stuff. And I wanted to kind of dissect this because I've heard it also in the news, that the news is saying it that way. And when something like that gets to the news and the news kind of agrees with it, then you got to start being suspicious of things. And, and why do they put it that way? People need to go back to work or people need to work. That's the phrase. Do they, though? Do they? Is, is that what they need? They need work? Not really. What we need is things like food and a place to live. That's what we need. The problem is that we've, we've thought for so long now, we've thought that the only way to get those things, the only way to survive is to have a job. And even people who don't have a job, they still live off people who who do have work. Whether it's uh, because, you know, anybody from your, your really rich person who purely lives off the labor of others, which is like all rich people, basically, um, to, to the very poor person who, uh, who, who can't work or, or wants or doesn't uh, make enough at their work, so, uh, so they rely on someone else's work as well. Really, we all rely on other people's jobs, because I would never um, be able to get the food and the clothes and the housing and the, the software and so on that I need without other people with jobs. So, so jobs themselves, this very narrow understanding of, of work is the norm, that we all have these jobs, people need jobs, people need to get back to their jobs so they can work. But again, th that's not quite what they need. You could eliminate the need for jobs if we also eliminated money or, um, or, or simply just distributed things like food um, and housing in an equitable manner so that everybody had enough, right? Now, that can't happen under capitalism, or at least uh, it, it, it hasn't been this way since kind of the early days of capitalism. For a couple of hundred years now, you know, food has been commodified, subject to market forces, so that instead of being allowed to just have some, we're forced to pay for it. That's the only way that you're allowed to have any. Unless, of course, you grow your own in, you know, on your windowsill. You could maybe grow a tomato plant or something, but you're, there's no way you'll have enough to feed yourself and your family. Um, even if everybody in your apartment building has little tomato plants on their windowsills, there's no way you'll be able to feed each other. And because of this jobs mindset and the idea that, that you have to work, um, you, you have to have a job and you have to work and you have to make money or else you're like some kind of parasite or something, that idea has long been a part of uh, a lot of kind of capitalist cultures, and the U.S. being one of the strongest capitalist places, it's maybe um, those those beliefs are are so deeply embedded uh, into the culture there. And as a result, 
you've got the so-called essential workers and the so-called non-essential workers who are fighting against each other now, who are arguing with each other uh, because, you know, the, the essential workers, well, they still have to go to work right now, which is really kind of means that they're being forced to continue to work. Because again, we don't, we don't need jobs. We need food and, and, and housing and so on, but they're forced into jobs because even though there's enough food, uh, they, they're still forced to make someone else money so that they can be allowed to get the food. They still have to pay rent because uh, somebody owns their, uh, the place where they live. So that they still, they're still being forced to pay for all the same things. Um, but but they're, they're deemed essential, so they're, they've got to go back to work. Whereas these non-essential workers, a lot of them are saying, please, I need to go back to work. In other words, I want to put myself in harm's way, possibly harming a lot of other people during this pandemic. Remember, this is a virus, a pandemic. People are dying, especially in the United States. And, uh, and yet, non-essential workers... Uh, are are begging to go back to work instead of instead of saying like um, don't you know I don't I don't want to have to pay rent anymore or in many people's cases I can't afford to pay rent anymore um, I don't want to have to you know pay a, a quarter of my income on food when rich people who do less work than I do. Um, you know, pay 0.01% of their income on food. And so anyway, so now essential workers are working and some of them are blaming like non-essential workers or, or, or something or, or other people and saying like, oh, you're, you're just sponging or you're sponging off our labor. And so they're fighting with each other when really... The problem is the people on top, the people on top who are still making money off your labor, even though they're sitting in their nice big homes and, uh, and, and sipping champagne and, and tweeting things like reopen America. That's a great propaganda phrase, isn't it? Great rhetoric there. Reopen America. In other words, we were open you could do whatever you want. We were free because, you know, Americans still believe they're free, despite all evidence to the contrary. Um, and, and, you know, even just the word America, like that's, that in itself brings all these emotions to the surface. Our country needs to open up again. Now, of course, the people who are saying that don't actually believe that because most of them are in favor of strong restrictions on immigration. When they say open up America, they mean inside. Open up the inside doors so people can leave their homes and in turn spread this virus around. I mean, I can't imagine how, how, uh, how dra drastically uh, rates of infection have increased because of these protests uh, in the streets over the past couple of weeks. Um, but what they're... The point is that what they're protesting is the wrong thing. They shouldn't be protesting um, not letting them have jobs that probably they don't even like and don't pay very much money anyway. Um, when the problem is things like um, their, their, the precarious nature of their housing situation because their landlords are still demanding that they pay to live in their own homes. Or of, of food, because food's been commodified, so you have to pay for it. Really, it's, it's the people who've, who've designed this system and the people who continue to make it rich off this system who are the problem. And those same people, of course, are the ones who are behind a lot of these protests. A lot of the people protesting are either... Uh, bosses themselves or are being manipulated by bosses and rich people. They're saying, you know, go back to work or let us go back to work. 
when really what they mean is um, the, the, the people on top and, and bosses want to force employees to go back to work. Again, to put themselves in harm's way when there's a, a virus, when there's a pandemic going on. It's not the time for us to be going back to work unless um, we can do our work from home or we can do it with the right PPE, the, the personal protective equipment. Um, and, and yet it's clear that these bosses, they don't care how many people die. And, and why would they? Because, of course, they see workers as... Um, infinitely disposable one dies okay start the hiring process we'll get a new one workers and and they're, they're not people they're just cogs in in the in the capitalists machine one other thing i just want to talk about um this is just a very brief video as you can tell the other thing i wanted to talk about was this Thing that they're saying that it's that this virus only has about a point uh, a, a point nine percent death rate or a one percent death rate. They they you know they're saying that as as part of this protest they're saying you know my business is failing. You, actually, that's an interesting thing. You're hearing things like my business is failing. In other words, it's the kind of more middle to upper middle class people who are suffering and like making memes and stuff. They're, you know, the people with their own businesses. Oh, pity them. The people who have enough money to start their own business and force the people who don't to go back to jobs that suck. But these, these people are saying like, you know, my business is crumbling for a virus that only has like a 1% death rate. It's like they, they're not even trying. They just throw something out without even thinking about it. But do they just not realize that in a country like the United States, a 1% death rate means 3 million people dead. <laughs> 3 million people. I mean, I know that these guys don't care you know, when it's three million people in Iraq. They're fine with killing those people. But it's surprising to think that they don't mind killing three million Americans. But, but then this virus, I guess, has got us all kind of, uh, kind of going, going silly in a way. The way, uh, you could say, the way... Uh, a lot of these people, like Tommy Laren, recently pro uh, said something about comparing the lockdown to slavery. Like she was saying it's about as bad as slavery. <laughs> I mean, how, how spoiled a brat do you have to be to, to compare the two? To say that they're even close. You know, you've been, you've been locked at home for a couple of months now. That's slavery eh, no it isn't and dennis prager said uh, in a tweet recently something like uh, this this lockdown is the biggest mistake in the history of the united states or something like that <laughs> what <laughs> i mean does he know any history at all does he, does he know any history? Anything? I mean, I, I can think of like a million things that were worse. Maybe he meant something specifically about it being a mistake. Because all those other things, you know, the genocides, the slavery, the wars, and so on, um, those weren't actually mistakes. So maybe that's what he's talking about. But uh, again, you know, you'd have to come from an incredible position of privilege to really think that the having to stay at home to prevent people from being sick is some kind of horrible burden that nobody else has ever had to suffer before. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say for today. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope uh, things are sunny where you are like they are for me. And we'll see you again soon.